The story continues, and we see Jord casting a purification spell on Lucille. He tells him, as he disappeared into the labyrinth for half a day, he thought that Lucille might have turned into a mass o zombie. Lucille then thinks that his level still hasn't gone up, and he has slayed many monsters, so he thinks this must be some kind of special training facility, making him more excited while Jord wonders what kind of creep gets excited in this situation. Jord then takes him to a shop where he can exchange the magic stones for points. He can use the points to buy any items in the shop, and Lucille thinks it's just like a video game. They meet the shop owner, Catlia. She then checks the magic stones collected by Lucille, and mentions that it's worth a total of 4,216 points. She's impressed by the collection, as it was his first day. Lucille tries to see if he can buy spell books with his points, but they are expensive, and goes up to a million. So, he couldn't afford it right now. He then checks out the weapons made from holy silver, and surprisingly they are cheap since no one usually buys them, and reselling is forbidden. Lucille credits this to his monster luck ability. She explains that generally healers can't cast spells while they are wielding a weapon, so it's just a dead stock. However, for Lucille this is not a problem, making these weapons a perfect choice for him. She also offers him a discount as a first-time customer, allowing him to purchase a spear and a sword for a total of 4,000 points. Later, Lucille reflects on his first day of work, and sets his goal to achieve a million points to buy the spell book. Just then he comes across Granhart. He asks Lucille about his work, and tells him that his earnings will be deposited to his guild account at the start of the month, and proceeds to give him some advice. He then gives Lucille a clerical robe, and the chatterbox again starts giving him advice, and Lucille wonders if he should use his Excalibur to shut him up. The following day, Lucille continues to venture deeper into the labyrinth with his new weapons. On his second day, he mapped the labyrinth, and he also noticed that the zombies have started carrying weapons now. His second day collection amounts to 5,372 points, and Catlia asks him not to overdo it, as she still hasn't experienced the taste of his Excalibur. On day 3, he has already reached level 6, but as soon as he starts getting cocky, he barely escapes a trap, and notes it down. From there on, he continues to explore the labyrinth, defeating monsters. Although his points have reached new heights, his level is still stuck at 1. It's day 10, and we see that Lucille has reached level 10. He defeats a group of monsters with his purification attack, and is thankful for such a cheat skill, as he would have been wasted long ago without it. As he searches for the next level, he encounters the boss room but decides to come back later. He inquires about the boss room with Jord but he's shocked that Lucio had already reached that far in such a short amount of time, while Jord had just reached there recently. On the next day, Lucio goes to the boss room, he has prepared for the boss fight, and has also spent 50,000 points on the new bow just for the battle. He hopes to get some special reward when he defeats the boss, and goes inside after chugging down Substance X. Inside, he encounters a large group of monsters. When he tries to cast his purification spell, he's shocked that his magic is blocked. A zombie attacks him, but he thinks that this pain is nothing compared to the pain he received from Broad's Excalibur, and doesn't give up. He focuses his magic on the sword, and starts attacking the monster. Eventually he defeats them all, but he still can't use his magic. Just when he thought it's over, the boss appeared. The undead boss is called White. Lucille tries to attack it with his bow, but it dodges his attacks. Lucille realizes that he is afraid of the holy silver weapons, so he still has a chance to defeat the boss. He plans to attack the boss while it's casting the spell. When the boss tries to cast a spell, Lucille shoots an arrow to distract him then attacks him with his sword, but it wasn't enough to kill the monster. He then attacks him with his spear, and cuts his head off with his sword, finally defeating the boss. After his victory, he realizes that he can use magic again, and use it to heal himself. As he's about to leave a hidden staircase appears, but Lucille has learned his lesson so he decides to visit it later. 
When he brings the collection to Catlia, she scolds him for being too reckless. After evaluating, she informs that he has earned a total of 108,914 points, and Lucio realizes that the labyrinth boss was the real deal. He then shows her the robe which the boss was wearing, along with a necklace and staff. Catlia is shocked to see this, and asks him to follow her immediately, and takes him to the Pope. The Pope turns out to be a girl, who checks the items, and confirms that it belonged to another healer Ozenario, who disappeared 12 years ago. She tells him that the necklace reduces the magic consumption by half, and the staff disables the magic. She wishes to purchase these from Lucille, and he agrees, but requests for a magic bag with larger capacity. The Pope agrees, and gives him a magical sack which can hold items as much as this room. As they leave the Pope's chamber, Lucille wonders if that was too cocky, but Catlia states it's fine, but her expression doesn't seem to match her statement. This is where the video ends, thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.